Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, some of you might have also attended a launch of the special issue in Cape Town. This is not a rerun, but a slightly different uh, uh, manifestation. In Cape Town, I was, uh, had just had a baby, so I couldn't attend. So I don't know if we'll be repeating ourselves, but I hope not. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and my colleague, Arima Mishra, who co-edited the volume with me. Unfortunately, Arima um, is ill and wasn't able to come from India. Otherwise, she would have been here to present her paper. Um, so the background for the special issue is um, this growing recognition within public health, within global health, that health systems that are weak actually threaten global health progress, that it's impossible to meet the MDGs without stronger health system, which has led to really a renewed global and national commitment to strengthening health systems, which has been documented by researchers uh, like Hafner and Schiffman in recent papers. Now, today, global health leaders from the World Health Organization to the Gavi Alliance and national governments and donors all endorse this goal of health system strengthening. But there's really no consensus on what it entails. And um, our aim with this special issue is really to demonstrate the potential that ethnographic inquiry, as uh, Cecil defined it, uh, has to reinvigorate really a political rather than a technical debate about what health systems means. And our starting point was that the core global health system of health system cannot be taken for granted, but really must be understood in its historical, its political, and its social context. So while the WHO defines health systems holistically as all the organizations, peoples, and actions whose primary intent is to promote, restore, and maintain health, in actual global health uh, discourse and practice, uh, the notion of a health system is often taken on different meanings. And it uh, reflects really distinct ideological convictions and political and even moral principles. So uh, today, health system strengthening is often approached as uh, a political, not, not, a, not as a political, but as a technical challenge with the focus on how to strengthen implementation and management structures within health service delivery, but less attention on the politics and the social relations that shape health systems. So along with my colleagues, I became interested in exploring what role ethnography can have in understanding both the concept and practices of health systems, policies, and practices. So with support from Leva, which you've heard about now, we convened a workshop um, in Oslo in 2013. It was really a, quite a small group of anthropologists and one public health professional and token social scientist who came together to discuss this issue and to present original research that engaged with the question of how ethnography can contribute. Uh, of course, our work fits within a broader movement within social sciences and health systems. And there have been recent, recent calls for a social science perspe perspective that challenge biomedical and technocratic understandings of health systems and practices, put forward especially by Lucy Gilson and colleagues. And um, really a new global health subfield has emerged in recent years called the, the Health Policy and Systems Research um, Subfield. But we would argue that it has really been prone to what can be called disciplinary capture by dominant health research traditions. And um, key researchers within the field have recognized that there's a need for both conceptual and theoretical engagement with disciplines that have had a, a stronger um, analytical focus on the social and political uh, aspects of health systems. And this includes disciplines like social medicine and medical anthropology, which is the core um, discipline that many of us in the special issue come from. And we think that um, anthropology is really well suited to bring forth a social and political perspective. Uh, and we contribute to what really has been a, a long but often overlooked history of engagement with these questions within anthropology. So from the 1970s onwards, medical anthropologists have demonstrated how medical systems can best be understood within larger historical, economic, and political contexts. And critical interpretive medical anthropologists have drawn um, attention to the assumptions that frame the way that we understand health to try to explain why certain concepts and interventions might not necessarily travel very well from one context to another. 
And more recently, anthropologists have moved from the attention to very local uh, health practices and systems to look at the global health enterprise itself, to the internal uh, social dynamics of the global health enterprise, to the politi politics of global health evidence production and research, and the discourses that underpin the sort of work that um, we do. Uh, yet anthropology's position within global health has, I think we can all agree, been rather marginal. And there are many reasons for this. One is that anthropologists tend to talk only to anthropologists. And <laughs> the other reason is this mistaken tendency within in, uh, public health research to dismiss qualitative forms of inquiry as not rigorous enough to inform health policy and practice. I think, I think it was maybe Cecil yesterday who said that it tends to be considered a handmaiden to, uh, to the more core disciplines of public health. Um, but we think that ethnography can really contribute a lot to the new social science movement within uh, global health research. Um, ethnography can help to ensure that the evidence base that frames global health debates is inclusive and that it represents multiple dimensions of human experience. And that includes also the voices of those who are affected by global processes, but also I would claim those, the voices of those who make global policy. Uh, ethnography has the potential to, um, to really address the blockages and the upward flow of information from, from local contexts to reveal also how global health policies and programs interact with weak healthcare systems on the ground to shape people's actual experiences of access to healthcare, uh, like we heard about yesterday in the student seminar and Birgit's presentation from Nicaragua, for instance. Um, ethnography helps to uncover how it is that the health system reproduces what uh, Paul Farmer calls structural violence, uh, which really are the processes that shape the unequal distribution of problems in global health, ran ranging from HIV AIDS to maternal mortality. And so we understand um, ethnography as applied to global health to be not just about using qualitative methods, but rather about questioning, uh, changing the why, changing why we ask the questions that we ask and looking at the categories that we often take for granted. What do these categories mean? Why, why do we talk about uh, progress in the way that we do? Why do we understand evidence to constitute what we think it does? And it involves asking awkward questions and interrogating really the social relations, histories and politics that shape the way that we think about health. Uh, so these are the, this is the sort of background for the special issue that we brought together, which um, ended up containing eight peer-reviewed articles that really draw on multi-sided and multi-layered ethnographic research from a range of contexts, from Kenya, Burkina Faso, Mongolia, Gambia, and from uh, three different Indian states, as well as from within the centers of global health uh, power. And we ask questions in the special issue about the relationships between policy, discourse, and practices. But we really privilege the perspectives of actors. And it's really a range of different actors that we're talking about here, from healthcare users in Mongolia, that Benedicta will talk about, to community health workers in India, to medical doctors in Kenya, health bureaucrats and NGOs working in Burkina Faso, and representatives of global health organizations working at the international level. Uh, so we take ethnography beyond uh, this traditional preoccupation with the local to respond to recent calls uh, from uh, on anthropologists to become more sophisticated when, quote, studying up and looking at really the global processes uh, that happen amongst multiple stakeholders, uh, donor communities, and emerging global health networks. Um, I'm going to skip the summary of the articles in the interest of time, but uh, four of the papers will be presented here today, but I urge you all to look at the, uh, the remaining four. We've put copies of the uh, journal uh, down here, and also they're freely available online. I'll give you the address and their flyers on your seats, I see. But um, I just wanted to emphasize that what, what these papers um, try to do together is to ask questions um, about social processes, power relations, development culture, and discourses, and the way in which these together drive uh, the global health enterprise that we've been discussing at this conference. 
So we hope that our papers um, demonstrate how ethnography can really serve as a powerful corrective to, to the tendency that we often see within global health to displace debates about health system from the political realm uh, and recast them as technical debates about healthcare delivery. Thank you very much.